Well, howdy, everybody. Welcome to our video today. <laughs> Howdy. Hola. Hello. Hey. What's up everybody? My name's Brylan. And I'm Lisa. Today's video is going to be a few tips on how we personally keep Christ at the center of our marriage. Today's video is a collaboration with one of my good friends here on YouTube, Lauren from The Joyful Homemaker. Her and her husband are doing this same sort of video sharing their tips on how they keep Christ in the center of their marriage. So be sure to go check out her video. I'll have it linked below. She does all different kinds of videos including mom day in the life type videos because she has a little son and a baby on the way Ooh. and she does bible studies and just some really cool videos so be sure to go check her out spoiler alert she's awesome if you came over from lauren's channel welcome i apologize in advance hey why don't you hit the subscribe button put your feet up and stick around for a while we do vlogs we do diys lifestyle videos and more importantly we do faith videos. Yeah, so hit that subscribe button and the little bell next to it so that way you'll be notified whenever we post a new video. By the way, when you guys are watching this, we're celebrating our fifth wedding anniversary, which is so exciting. <laughs> Happy anniversary. <laughs> So here are a few tips on how we keep Christ in the center of our marriage. Deep number one. We always pray together. I can't think of the last time that we weren't going through something difficult or maybe one of us was feeling um, a certain way about um, a circumstance that was happening that we didn't come together and pray or that we didn't go to sleep at night without praying together first. And we also make a habit to pray together before meals and we pray together every night before we go to sleep. And I think this is just a way for us to come together to acknowledge God and just to get together and pray together. There's something so intimate when you pray with others, and especially within a marriage, I think that's so important. And check out this awesome verse found in Matthew 18. It's verses 19 and 20. I also tell you this, if two of you agree here on earth concerning anything you ask, my Father in heaven will do it for you. For where two or three gather together as my followers, I am there among them. Now, this is God saying that when two or more gathered, he's going to be there uh, divinely present among them. Now, picture doing this with the person that you love the most on earth, a husband and a wife getting together with an equal mind and an equal spirit saying, God, we want to give you our time and we want to give you our requests. And, and think about how much God is going to bless that and provide for you through that. And I can tell you this, he has provided for us every step of our marriage mm -hmm. because we keep him at the forefront yeah. and because we come together and we pray together. Tip number two. <laughs> Tip number two, we frequently read the Bible together or do a devotional together. This is something we like to do daily, whether we're reading a devotional together in the mornings or we're just getting together and talking about what we learn in our separate Bible studies. It's really awesome because we can learn from each other, we can talk about God's word together, and we can learn together if we are reading something together. Together! <laughs> together, together, together. Together! <laughs> Whoa, I sounded like Goofy. You did. Together! <laughs> so being in Bible study is the most essential thing that we can do in our relationship with Christ. It's how we draw near to him, it's how we learn about our savior and about what he has left for us. Um, to learn on this earth. And when you incorporate Bible study as something that you do together with your husband or your wife, um, it can be very powerful. And whether it's reading a chapter of the Bible together or doing uh, a really, you know, a, a deep devotional that incorporates scripture, it can really do a lot on helping you both be in a place where you can keep each other accountable in what you're reading, mm -hmm. but also to be able to say, hey, remember what we read? Let's talk about it. Or yeah. hey, do you remember what we read? Uh, do you remember that verse that we were going to memorize? It's just really good at helping keep you accountable, but also just doing it together. There's a bond that's formed between you when you're in God's word together yeah. that is undeniable and unmistakable. And something really easy you can do as well 
uh, even if we're driving in the car together, sometimes like he'll be driving and so I'll pull up a devotional, I'll read it and then we'll just talk about it for the rest of our drive. And that's something really easy that we can do together, but it gets us talking about the word and usually whenever we read something, whether it's a passage of scripture or it's a devotional, we both tend to pick up different things. And so we'll each share what we have and learn from each other. What she said. And number three. And number three is being aware and trying to live out daily what God's word says about marriage. Yeah. And there is so much that we could say about this because there's a lot of passages about marriage in the Bible, but there is one that we just wanted to share with you guys just to give you a couple little tidbits about something that's really important. And that's found in Ephesians 5. I'm going to read Ephesians 5 verses 22 through 24 and then Bri is going to take it from there. For wives, this means submit to your husbands as to the Lord. For a husband is the head of his wife as Christ is the head of the church. He is the savior of his body, the church. As the church submits to Christ, so you wives should submit to your husbands in everything. So basically, we're talking about submission here, which I know in today's world, that's a scary word. It's kind of a bad word in a way, but it doesn't have to be. Submission is something we all do every single day. <laughs> How dare you? <laughs> we submit to our government, to the authorities. If you're in school, you submit to your teachers. We submit to our parents when we're younger. There is several different things. If you're in a workplace, you submit to your boss. So in a marriage, the husband is considered the leader and the wife submits to her husband. And this is the way that God has designed it. And one thing that really stands out to me with submission is when I submit to my husband, I'm telling God that I trust him and his plan. When I choose not to submit to my husband, I'm saying, God, no, I don't want to do what your word says and I don't trust you because ultimately God isn't the one that's in control of our marriage. He's the one that we are giving our marriage over to. He's the one that's in control of my life and I would much rather that he be in control because he knows what's best. Sometimes I know it's hard for us because we don't see the way things he sees them. But when we submit to our husbands, we are telling God that we trust him and that we want to obey him. Now, this by no means means that husbands are exempt from responsibility. In fact, there's probably three times as many verses given to husbands uh, on the responsibility they have towards their wives. Let's check out verses 25 and 26 now. For husbands, this means love your wives just as Christ loved the church. He gave up his life for her to make her holy and clean, washed by the cleansing of God's word. Looking at the heart of this is a form of submission. We're submitting to Christ's uh, will for us to love our wives like he loved the church. He gave up his life for us, for the church. And we are to love our wives in the same way that we would give up our, life for, our lives for them. That's powerful. And that's a lot of responsibility. <laughs> And this is a daughter of Christ. This is a daughter of God. Think about if any of you have children out there, you know how precious your children are. Now, think about how precious we are to Jesus. Yeah. How he came down here and gave his life for us, his one and only perfect life, sinless life. And he took sin upon himself. And we are tasked as husbands to take care of God's daughter. Okay, talk about the ultimate, like, meeting with a shotgun. Like, <laughs> So we, we have this deep responsibility to, be, uh, to make sure that we are not only loving them, but also giving them an environment, providing an environment for them to be able to worship and, and, and lead their life in Christ the way that we are called to. So again, back to what Lisa was saying about submission and how it's such a, a bad word these days. Uh, it's it's not in any sense that the husband is is the leader of the relationship in the sense of um, being superior, being superior or oppressive, because we are called to love our wives in a self sacrificial manner. If there was any oppression in that, then we wouldn't have to love them in a way that we would give our life for them, because yeah. it would be the other way around. One dire thing that I absolutely want to make sure is that our marriage is rich and fulfilling in her service to God and vice versa. So those are just three tips on how we keep Christ at the center of our marriage. This is not everything. This is an, an exhaustive list, yeah. but <laughs> by no means. But 
it, it, it really is, I think. Uh, the essentials, right? Absolutely, yeah. And the starting place on what I, we feel would benefit any marriage. Yeah. Praying together, being in God's word together, and submitting to God's word in your marriage. And if you guys want more of these marriage related videos, make sure to give this video a thumbs up and let us know in the comments below. <laughs> also remember to go check out Lauren and Andrew's video. Again, I have it linked below. Go see what their tips are for keeping Christ in the center of, of their marriage. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video and be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't yet. We love you all and we'll see you in our next video. Bye. Well, honk a tonk. <laughs> and we're gonna let you guys in on Lisa is sick, getting over a cold as we speak. So, if you see me shunning her, that's completely normal. First tip that you shall receive. And check out this awesome verse. Verse. <laughs> Together! Oh. <laughs> what? That's so weird. I'm famous. <laughs> Did you just burp when you did that? No, I mean to. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Good? Yeah, and it is hot. Yep.